The Dysfunction Files, Episode 10, Why CBD Didn't Work for You and Why It Should Have. You tried CBD. You were hopeful, maybe even desperate. And what happened? Nothing. So you chalked it up to hype. You tossed the bottle in a drawer next to your expired magnesium and Advil from 1996, and you went back to suffering. But what if the problem wasn't you or the CBD? What if the hemp industry has some issues or is just straight up broken? What if just like your labs, what you were told was normal was never even close to what your body actually needs? I am Dr. Kristen Lindgren, and this is The Dysfunction Files. Today, we're unpacking why CBD didn't work for you and why it absolutely should have. Let's get into it. Okay, before I get into the reasons CBD did nothing for you, I feel there are still swirling questions and mysteries around what CBD is, how it's different from hemp, its relationship to marijuana, and everything in between. Let me just speak to that for a sec at a high level. Hemp and marijuana are sister plants in the family known as cannabis sativa. The legal difference is the THC content. Cannabis contains all of these compounds called cannabinoids. There's like more than 120 of them. But the two major cannabinoids or heavy lifters with all the medical benefits in cannabis are THC and CBD. Hemp contains mostly CBD. Marijuana contains mostly THC. We're good so far. Okay. According to the Farm Bill of 2018, hemp was made legal at the federal level, like in all 50 states, as long as it contains less than 0.3% THC by dry weight of the plant. So are all hemp strains legal? Uh, No. Again, only the ones that contain less than 0.3% THC by dry weight. So when people say it's just weed, the answer is... Kind of, but not legally. State by state, there are different rules when it comes to the legality of THC content. Here in Wisconsin, where I live, any cannabis plant containing more than 0.3% THC is illegal for any reason whatsoever. This car has been stopped for quite some time. I'm going to check it out. Excuse me. Have you been smoking any pot today? No. Well, you've been stopped here for 15 minutes. Can you tell me why that is? We're waiting for the stop sign to turn green. How high are you? How high are you? No, I said, how high are you? Hi, how are you? Even in states where marijuana is, quote, legal, it is technically illegal according to the feds. Currently, THC in marijuana is still classified as a Schedule I controlled substance under the U.S. Federal Controlled Substances Act, right there next to cocaine and heroin. That means the government believes it has absolutely no accepted medical use and a high potential for abuse. Yes, this is outdated and clearly controversial. Interestingly, This applies only to the THC in marijuana and not that 0.3% in hemp, even though they are exactly the same molecule. See how fast this gets muddy? Because this episode is on CBD and not THC, I'm going to try my best to stay in that lane. Although if you've watched me before, you know I am historically a terrible driver. Let's get into the reasons why CBD didn't do anything for you. Reason number one, you were sold garbage. Let's start with the obvious. Much of the CBD on the market is garbage. It's not been third-party tested. It's not full spectrum. It's got a bunch of fake crap added to it, and it's likely been sitting on the shelf since, well, 2018 when it was legalized. You'll find there are three main types of CBD. Full spectrum CBD broad-spectrum CBD, and CBD isolate. 
Full spectrum is exactly what it sounds like. They extract all of the oil from the plant, put it in a carrier, and voila, that's it. Full spectrum CBD products contain all of the cannabinoids. Remember, there's more than like 120 of these. That includes the tiny amount of THC and all the other terpenes and plant compounds that make CBD actually work. All of these things working together is referred to as, quote, the entourage effect, where plant compounds work together to enhance each other's impact. Remember, hemp contains mostly CBD. So even though there's all this other stuff in hemp, we typically call it CBD or CBD oil and not hemp oil. There is something called hemp seed oil. Contrary to popular belief, there is no CBD in hemp seeds. Some people use this hemp seed oil for cooking, but again, no CBD in hemp seed oil. Broad spectrum CBD products contain everything the full spectrum ones do minus the THC. All the cannabinoids weigh a little bit differently, so there's fancy equipment out there that can kind of siphon that THC off, but leave all of the rest of the good stuff in it. Full spectrum is best because that's how God made it. But if you happen to have some moral hangup or intolerance to THC, broad spectrum is the next best bet. Lastly, there's something called CBD isolate. This is pure cannabidiol, which might sound sexy, but it's not. It's been stripped of THC, the terpenes, and plant compounds, as well as all the other cannabinoids. No entourage effect here. No synergy. I'm calling this garbage because this is what is in a lot of, quote, premium CBD products from giant online retailers. They do this because it's cheap, and they can call it CBD which it technically is, but that's not how CBD works. So you bought a CBD tincture from a gas station and it didn't do anything? Of course it didn't. That's not real CBD. Reason number two, wrong dose or wrong delivery. Here's a little known secret. CBD doesn't absorb particularly well. Bioavailability matters. Sublingual tinctures are absorbed much more effectively than your average CBD gummy or capsule, unless those gummies or capsules are made with high quality extracts. And if we're talking about topical use, same rules apply. It has to be formulated properly with the right carrier oils and emulsifiers to get through the skin and into your system. And dosing, most people are taking way too little. Therapeutic doses for most people start around 25 to 50 milligrams, and for some conditions go much higher. For pain, insomnia, inflammation, or cancer, doses can range from 100 to 300 milligrams per day or more, depending on delivery. So if you took a 10 milligram CBD gummy and nothing happened, the CBD didn't fail. You were just underdosed. Also, CBD isn't like taking a Xanax or an aspirin. It builds up in your system over time. Just like an adaptogen or vitamin D, CBD often takes weeks of consistent dosing before your system levels out. Reason number three, you have an endocannabinoid system and it's probably deficient. Most people have no idea that the human body even has an endocannabinoid system. All mammals actually have this. Dogs, cats, cows, whales. We have an endocannabinoid system because our bodies actually make cannabinoids, two of them to be precise. Something called anandamide, which is named after the Sanskrit word ananda, meaning bliss, and 2 arachidonoglycerol. There'll be a quiz at the end of this. You'll have to spell that word. The endocannabinoid system regulates your nervous system, mood, inflammation, immunity, sleep, memory, digestion, and pain. Well, basically everything. You can safely assume all roads in the human body run through the endocannabinoid system. 
When this system is depleted or dysfunctional, something called clinical endocannabinoid deficiency, you can experience anxiety, fibromyalgia, IBS, migraines, insomnia, unexplained inflammation and pain. In other words, you. Your endocannabinoid system is out of balance due to chronic stress, toxin exposure, trauma, illness, or nutrient deficiency. CBD can help restore that balance, but it does take time, and it works best when supported with healthy lifestyle, nutrition, and yes, sometimes other cannabinoids. It's not necessarily a quick fix. It's about restoring equilibrium. This isn't necessarily reason number four, but I have to say it anyway, Big Pharma hates that this works. Still not convinced that CBD actually works? Let's talk about a drug called Epidiolex. It's a pharmaceutical version of CBD that GW Pharmaceuticals patented to treat seizures. For real. They took what nature gave us, manufactured a fake version of it in a lab, slapped it in a bottle, and got FDA approval. They did this for THC too, but remember, I'm trying to stay in my lane here. And the minute that happened, farmers and clinics got hit with all these weird regulations. Natural cannabinoids are still lumped in with controlled substances. Sound familiar? I just thought it was too puffy. I'm supposed to have a hook or something? There, Mariah. Better? I'll continue to work on it. It's an important prop. Why? Because you can't patent a plant, but you can profit off of a synthetic version and pretend you invented it. There is no money in wellness, people, but there is a lot of money in chronic illness, controlled substances, and patented cannabinoids. You didn't fail CBD. The system failed you. A few other points here. I said I was only going to talk about CBD, but... What is Delta-8? Remember all those other 120 different cannabinoids? CBD and Delta-9 THC are the two, quote, major cannabinoids in cannabis. But there are all these other minor cannabinoids. Delta-8 THC is one of these. It's mildly psychoactive compared to Delta-9 THC and rides a legal loophole but it's still THC. Legal if it comes from a hemp plant that fits the less than 0.3% Delta-9 THC rule. Again, there are lots of these minor cannabinoids. Most of them we don't even know what they do, but some, some we do. For example, CBN, good for sleep. CBG, anti-inflammatory and gut support. THCV, appetite suppression, focus. These cannabinoids are sometimes isolated or stacked in blends for specific effects. Sometimes it's helpful. Sometimes it's just marketing. Questions from the crowd. Will I piss hot on a drug test if I'm using CBD? Uh, yes. Yes, you can. Delta-8 and Delta-9 products are THC, and the cheap urine tests at work don't care if that THC came from a legally sourced hemp plant or a college dorm room bong. Even tiny legal amounts of THC in full spectrum CBD can accumulate and trigger a drug test. Not always, but it is possible. If you're in a zero tolerance job, go THC free. So broad spectrum products, CBD isolate only, or just wait until the government removes this ridiculous rule altogether. Oh, but officers, go ahead and take your Adderall, Ativan, and Vicodin. Those things are perfectly fine. What to look for in real CBD products and what we use. Just because I have to have my fingers in everything, it will likely not shock you to know that I've been growing my very own certified organic hemp for the past few years right here at the farm. I'm not saying I'm good at it, but I'm learning. Thankfully, we also partner with an incredible local organic grower, and the difference is in night and day. The CBD from our plants is rich in terpenes, robust in cannabinoids, and smells like something alive, not like basement extract. 
Plus it freaks out my kids to see like what appears to be weed growing in the backyard. And that brings me joy. Years ago, we sourced everything from Colorado, but the quality was inconsistent at best. Some batches were okay. Others were total garbage. So now we grow it. We extract it. We make it ourselves. Tinctures, gummies, specialized blends for sleep, cancer, anxiety. We even make our own CBD pain cream formulated with hemp extract. I personally made, you'd be so proud of me. We hopefully during this section, I found some pictures for B roll so that you can see what real vibrant hemp looks like and what it means to actually know where your medicine comes from. Closing. So CBD didn't fail you. You were misled, underdosed, probably overcharged, and handed a product designed to disappoint or to make you believe only a product synthesized by Big Pharma to look like CBD actually works. But your body was built to heal. And when you give it the tools it needs, including real CBD made from real plants grown by people who care, your biology responds. So here's your takeaway. If CBD didn't work for you, it probably wasn't CBD, but real plant medicine made clean, dosed correctly, and given consistently, that's not hype. That's healing. That'll do it for me. Thanks so much for listening, everyone. I'm Dr. Kristen Lindgren, and if you found this episode useful or entertaining, please like the channel, leave a comment, and share this with a friend. If there's something you'd like to hear more about, drop it in a comment below or send an email to our clinic. We'll include it in the show notes. And lastly, if you've thought about trying CBD or already have, and it didn't work for you, stop into our brand new location and give real CBD products handcrafted right here in Wisconsin a try. We'd love to see you. Until next time, stay curious, question everything, and remember, you are in control of your own health care. I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now.